الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد الحمد لله all praises are for Allah عز وجل Allah سبحانه وتعالى our creator our nourisher our sustainer Allah سبحانه وتعالى who has given us the life and the strength and the ability the breath to be here today and Allah who controls our life as we continue to pass the years of our life on the face of the earth. Life is a very great ni'mat from Allah. If you don't have life, you are dead. And if you are dead, you can't do any good deeds. If you are dead, you can't even call Allah's name. And when a person is dying, the Quran itself tells us people will be crying to come back to life, alive. They will be crying and begging Allah, give me life, oh Allah, one moment again. Allah will say, no, you had it, what did you do with it? This is the common, ten common tendency of man. When we have something valuable, we don't appreciate it. And when it's been taken away, that's the time we cry, we bawl, we want it back. The same thing with our health. We take our health for granted. It's exactly what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. There are two favors that people are deceived about. These are the words he used. They are not unmindful, but they are deceived about. You live in deception. He says one of that is your health. So we are deceived about our health. How? You are healthy today, I am healthy, alhamdulillah. But we just believe we'll be healthy tomorrow. So we don't take care of our health. And we believe we'll be healthy next month and next year. And on account of that, we make plans for the year after and for two and three years. We says, next month I'll do that. You don't know if you will be alive, you are making plans for that. But that's common human tendency. And then lo and behold, we abuse our health, we don't take care of it, we run down our body, we don't eat, we don't drink, we don't rest. We use it in things that are not beneficial to our life in this world and the life hereafter. And when we kill our body and we kill our health, and that's the time we might be under the doctor's hand in the hospital, we are saying to the doctor, do everything you can to help me. I don't want to lose this organ. I don't want to lose my life. I don't want to die. I have my children. I have my family. Do anything you can to help me. And then we are to hear, we are to hear that, it's gone already. The time has passed already to fix what has gone wrong with you. That time we can't do anything. We can only treat you now. We can keep it stabilized, but we can't move whatever has come over you. We can just make you live in the same way without it becoming worse, but we can't undo what has been done to your body. Then we reflect and we look to see what bad we did. It. And then we realize we can't do it. So we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the life He has given to us. And when we understand and we thank Allah, why will we be thanking Allah? Because we recognize it is something that is valuable. Why thank a person if you don't recognize it is valuable? When would you thank a person? Think about it. When a person gives you something that is valuable, you say thank you, you say jazakallah. If you are not given anything, you don't just walk up to a person and say, Jazakallah, brother, thank you. He may look at you and say, why, why are you saying thank you? I didn't give you anything. So the common human tendency is you thank someone when you recognize that that person has done good to you. So we thank Allah when we recognize Allah has done good to us. We thank Allah for the life, for the breath, for the health, for the strength in our bodies, for living to see another day. And yet another day, and for the ability he has given us to do more and more, we thank him. Because we know our lives are in his hands. He can pull us back and that's it for us. Subhanallah, that's it. And it will be said that he breathed his last because Allah took our soul. So we have to appreciate that. And Allah has spared our lives until this day. Where we are down to the end of this blessed month of Sha'ban and we spoke about it in the past. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a mu'allim, mu'allim nas he was a teacher of mankind. Wa murabbin nas, and he was the one to train mankind. Wa muslihun nas, and the one to refine mankind. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so close to us, 
his followers, he says, I am to you like a father is to his children. I guide you. I show you. I tell you what is bad. I tell you what is good. I impress upon you to do certain things. Like a father will want good for his children, I want good for you. The only reason I tell you don't do this because it's bad for you. It's bad for your dunya, your life here. It is bad for your hereafter. When you do good, you win Allah's pleasure. You gain Allah's blessings. You become closer to Allah and you grow higher in Jannah. When you do bad, you fall in Allah's sight. Your heart becomes black with sins. When you do bad, you gain Allah's anger, His wrath, and His displeasure. You gain, you actually become far away from Allah. Allah is not concerned about you anymore. Allah is not concerned about helping you. You can cry to Him a thousand times, but if He's angry with you, He will help you. This is why we are told. In the Holy Quran, do the things that Allah loves because you will gain closeness to Allah. And when you become close to Allah, and when you do things that Allah loves, before you can even raise your hands to Allah, Allah will answer your prayer. Before you can say, Allahumma arabbana, oh ya yeah, Allah, Allah is there to answer your problems. Allah will remove the obstacles in your life. Allah will remove the difficulties. Allah will stop the evil plans from other people hitting you and striking you. He will turn it around and let it go back to where it came from. This is what Allah will do for us when we earn Allah's pleasure. So the end, at the end of Shaban, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to guard his companions and he will tell them about the virtues of the month that is right, right next to them, the month of Ramadan. And we are in this situation also. So a very beautiful hadith, which has been recorded in a number of books of ahadith by great compilers and great muhaddithin. Like Ibn Khuzayma has narrated this hadith in his Sahih. That's the Sahih of Ibn Khuzayma. Imam Bayhaqi was one of the greatest muhaddis. He has mentioned this hadith in, in his kitab. Also, Ibn Habban, the great muhaddis, has mentioned this hadith in his book. And Hafiz al Munziri, who is a great muhaddis, has mentioned it in his famous, well renowned book called At Targhib wa Tarheeb. Subhanallah. What is the hadith? The hadith that brings before us the virtues of the virtuous month of Ramadan. The blessings of the blessed month of Ramadan. The greatness of the great month of Ramadan. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that. How did it start? The Sahabi said, خَطَبَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam delivered a khutbah to us. Like how we have khutbah. He called them. He delivered a khutbah to them at the end of Sha'ban. Why? For two reasons. One is that he will announce to them Bashara, glad tidings of the month of Ramadan. And he will also pinpoint to them the greatness that lies in that month. You know, when people are going for pilgrimage, right here in Trinidad, they are told about the greatness of the Kaaba. So it builds that in their heart. It builds their love. It wants them to want to reach there. They are dreaming to reach there. They just want to step their foot on the grounds of, by the holy Kaaba. They are hearing it, meeting after meeting. The Hajj leader is telling them about Makkah, about Haram. Do you know what is the Kaaba? Do you know the Ambiyas are buried around there? Do you know that's the place Ibrahim salam walked on his foot from Philistine to go to the, the Kaaba in, in the land of Arabia in Makkah? Do you know the Masjid al Nabawi is the place where the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to perform salah and his blessed forehead will and head will touch the sacred ground? Do you know his room is preserved? His grave is right there. Allahu Akbar. So that love is built, isn't that so? And you are thinking and you are saying, Ya Allah, please take me there. Ya Allah, I want to see this. Oh Allah, I want to see this Kaaba. Allah says the first house before Adam alayhi salam, the angels at the time of Adam alayhi salam, subhanallah, were ordered to place the Kaaba, the place where the stone was actually 
put by Adam alayhi salam, the angels were making tawaf around that spot before Adam alayhi salam came on the face of the earth. And where our Kaaba is, is directly under the Kaaba of the angels, which is called Baytul Ma'mur in the highest heaven. Subhanallah. Angels, thousands and thousands of angels make tawaf, so it builds. So this is what people do before you reach there. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before the month of Ramadan could actually come in, he's speaking to them. So the heart will build that joy in it and that happiness will come. One is that the person, the believer, a true believer will become extremely happy. Subhanallah. He will become extremely happy to know such a great month is coming up ahead of him. And the second thing, he will begin to prepare in his mind, telling himself, I wouldn't miss the opportunity to do good deeds in that month. If this month is so great, I will do this, and I will do that, and I will do the other thing. He is actually preparing himself. So, the Prophet ﷺ delivered a sermon, a khutbah, on the last day or the end of Sha'ban. And he called the people, the Sahabas. And while he spoke to them, he was actually speaking to us. He was speaking to his entire ummah, subhanallah. Like the Holy Quran was revealed, who were the first addresses? The Sahabas. But it was revealed to the whole mankind. Allah is speaking to you and I. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the Sahabas, do not do that, it's haram. It's a message he sent to us. Oh Muslims, you are my followers, don't do that, that's haram, stay away from it. That's a direct message to us. And that's how close we are to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we, you and I read the, the, the hadith and we read the words, we feel as if he's speaking to us directly. Like if he's right there speaking to us. Telling us, oh my follower, do this. Oh my follower, do that. When we read the Quran, we feel within us that Allah is directly speaking to us. Subhanallah. This is the power in these things. The Holy Quran and the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has placed power and Allah has placed nur and light in it. And magnet that pulls our hearts towards it. Our hearts are so to attach like the Quran. You will recite the entire Quran, you will not become tired. When you finish the end, you want to start again. Isn't that so? Surah Fatiha. And you are reading and reading. You will sacrifice your sleep. For hours you will read. You will never become tired, Allahu Akbar. When you finish it, you want to start again. Like that for your whole life, from the day you learn to read Quran, in Ramadan and outside Ramadan, that love is there, it has life in it, it has nur, it is a magnet, it pulls your heart. And that is what the Holy Quran does for the believers. Allah says, Rahma, it is a book filled with Rahma, it is filled with sukoon, peace and tranquility. Subhanallah. So we must always recite the Quran. May Allah make us from among the reciters, night and day, in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. Subhanallah. You do that, it will transform your life. Subhanallah. You will become a person of the Quran. You love the Quran, Allah will love you. Allahu Akbar. Very important. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was speaking about Ramadan. And what did he say? He says, Ayyuhan Nas, O people, Qad adallakum shahrun azimun mubarakun. He says, uh, a very, very great month uh, has dawned upon you. Yani is coming to you now. قَدْ أَضَلَّكُمْ شَهْرٌ عَظِيمٌ مُبَارَكٌ A very great month is coming to you. A very blessed month is coming to you. He says, شَهْرٌ such a month فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ He's telling them, he says, this month that is coming, there is one particular night in this month that is more valuable, more valuable, just one night, more valuable in the sight of Allah than 1,000 months, subhanAllah, just that one night. You and I do not live, many of us do not live for 1,000 months, subhanAllah. And Allah has made it it's such that if you and I, we are able to get that one night in the month of Ramadan, which is called Laylatul Qadr, 
if we stand a portion of the night or for the entire night, although it might be a few hours, although it might be one night, you and I will get, if we got that night of power, we will get the blessings of if we stood up for 1,000 months or more in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very great virtue. A very great virtue. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He rewards His servants and He rewards the believers. And this is clear in the Holy Quran. In fact, about the night of power, Allah revealed an entire surah. What is Allah saying to us? How long can you and I stand up in, 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 in salat? Not very long. If we say we stand up from after Isha until Tahajjud finishes, a few hours, you may perform 100, 200 rakats. But at the end of the day, it's only one night. Isn't that so? We are tired in the morning. If you are, sad, if you are told next night, you do the same thing. You may do it, you have zeal, but then by the third and fourth night you become tired. So we might not be able to go more than two and three nights like that for the whole night in ibadah to Allah. But you know what Allah has done? If you get a portion of the night which is called Laylatul Qadr, Allah says, my servant, this is so great in my sight, I will give you the thawab as if you were literally and physically standing without movement for one thousand months that is what you're gonna get just for that we can't dream about that and that's in one ramadan and you know what happens the next ramadan comes and we are alive and we look for the night and we get it again two thousand months of ibadah goes in our record and we the other month of ramadan comes and we are still alive and we search and in our lives, how many Ramadan we would have gotten and how many nights called Laylatul Qadr we would have gotten. Subhanallah. This is why. This is why the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, When the servant of Allah and the believer will be given his book of deeds to read on the day of judgment and he will open his book, he will close it back and say, Oh Allah, there is a mistake. This is not my book, oh Allah. I didn't do all these things. This is somebody else's book. This cannot be my book. Allah will say, why? He said, I didn't do all these things for Allah. I didn't live for such a long period. Allah will smile. Allah will say, no, my servant. These are your rewards. This is your book. And then Allah will say to him, remember on such and such a night, you worship me. Remember you did this. Remember you fed the hungry. Remember you look out for the poor and the needy. Remember when people were asleep, you were worshipping me. Remember you got the night of power for how many years? This is your book. There is no mistake. People will be amazed to know that that's their book of deeds which is saying how many good deeds, subhanAllah. So in this, in this life, we do without checking. <laughs> Let Allah check and we'll receive our book. If we check, we may stop. <laughs> If we check and count, we'll stop. Because subhanAllah, you will do, and after doing some, you say, okay, I think I have done enough. <laughs> you wouldn't do any more. But if you think that that is insufficient, you will have uh, the zeal to do again. You will have the zeal the next day to do again. And still you will keep on thinking, I haven't done enough, I need to do more. Subhanallah. You read some Quran today, you say, half an hour? No, I see the brother there, he's going for two hours. <laughs> So you want, and just two hours, no, no, I can go more. <laughs> Allah has given me strength. I still have strength. I can do more. Subhanallah. Like the Sahabi of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu ta'ala. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and was asking for permission to fast frequently. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said three days a month. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I can do more. I want to do more. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, two days a week. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I can do more, I want to do more, not just two days a week. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, that is sufficient. He says, no, I feel I want to fast every day. <laughs> He's saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want to fast every day. The Rasul of Allah says, no, 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 it will take a toll on your body. He says, if you have to fast, do sawmul wisal. Do fast like Dawood alayhi salam. Fast one day and don't fast the other day. Then fast the next day. Then don't fast the other day. You skip one and 
But he says, no, Ya Rasul, I want to do more. I can do more. <laughs> Subhanallah. And he used to fast every day. And besides fasting for the whole night, he's in Ibadah. Subhanallah, Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As. He became old. And when he became old, his body became very weak. He became very feeble. He's only body and flesh. He's not steel and iron. And at that time when he became old, looking at his health and himself, he says, oh, how I wish I should have listened to my Habib and my beloved Rasulullah sallallahu I didn't take his advice and this is what has happened to me. I should have taken his advice. And from that, whatever the messenger of Allah gives us, it is filled with goodness. And this is why we should always be obedient to what he said. It's filled with goodness. So the, subhanallah, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, he says, Ayyuhannas, this great month, the month of Ramadan, shahrun azim, very, very great. And not only that, he says, Shahrun Mubarak, on a very blessed month. Extremely blessed. Every minute, every second of Ramadan is blessed. From the time the, the, the moon is sighted, and if there are 30 days from the time sunset enters, because it brings the night of Ramadan, and the night comes. From that, everything changes. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, in an authentic tradition which has been recorded by many compilers, it is stated that the angels decorate the Jannah, the paradise. Every night, continuously, they keep on decorating and decorating. Subhanallah, paradise, all the stories of paradise. And the other angels who are in a different heaven, they are seven stories, they say, What is the, what is the occasion? In other words, in our language, what is the occasion? Why all this big beautification and decoration? He said, don't you know? Don't you know what it is? This is what? He says, the month of Ramadan, the month of the Ummah of Muhammad is coming in. And we are decorating this paradise for that month of Ramadan, subhanAllah. This is why all these things happen according to the tradition recorded by Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Imam Tirmizi, Imam Ibn Majah, all these traditions. As soon as the month of Ramadan stops in, immediately every single door of Jannah is wide open and not a single door is locked. Uh, as for the doors of Jahannam, Allahu Akbar, Allah gives an order, lock all. The month is filled with so much barakah, blessings, subhanallah. Everything you do, the blessings are increased. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah has uh, made this month extremely Mubarak, very blessed. And then he said, Shahrun, fihi laylatun khayrun min al It is a month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the night, such a night that is greater than 1,000 months. He continues and says, Shahrun, it is a month. Ja'ala Allahu siyamahu faridha. Allah has made the fasting in the month farz. He has made it a duty upon the Muslims. Allah has made that. This is not automatic. This was not made by the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was given as a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when the month of Ramadan comes in, believers must observe the fast. Muslims, males and females, it is their duty which they owe to Allah. It is a mandatory it is compulsory upon the believers now. All the days that have gone by for 11 months, you were eating and you were drinking, now a test comes upon you. How much do you love your Allah and your God? How much can you sacrifice? Are you so strong in your iman that the food and drink you love so much, you can actually put it aside for a few hours? And not eat and not drink only for the sake of Allah, not for any other reason. Only for Allah. For no other reason. It's not that you are going on a diet. It's not that you want to protest. It's not that you want to go on a hunger strike. It's not that you want to lose weight. No, no, no. The only reason you will not eat and the only reason you will not drink and the only reason you will not commit haram and you will not commit other things that are haram and not permissible is only for Allah, no other reason. And when that believer 
When the month of Ramadan enters and that believer could tell Allah, what is that? Oh Allah, if you have ordered me to stay away from eating and drinking for 14 hours or 15 hours or 18 hours for the day, oh Allah, you give me life. That can only come when you decree that I will fast for your sake, subhanallah. But I have to die, I die for you, Allah. I live for you and I die for you. That's what the believer says. That's why fasting is one of the greatest acts of ibadah Allah has made. Because it has the most sacrifice. The nature of human being is that we are inclined towards eat and drink. We are inclined towards it. Subhanallah. And that's a sacrifice now. Allah says, how much of my servant? I gave you everything. The food you eat three and four times a day. Do you know who has given? I have given you. The drinks that you drink, who has given? I have given. And I am asking you, stay away from these things which I have given to you. And I have made halal for you. I want to test your iman and test your strength. How much you can do for me, subhanallah. And when the servant is able to do that, his mind is telling him, not fast, don't fast. Shaitan is prompting him. You can start at another time. Let this year go by. See how it goes. Try a few days. Next year. Next year may never come in your life. Subhanallah. You die before reaching next year. Shaitan is right around you. Because probably you never fasted. And Shaitan is making you ask yourself. Will I die? <laughs> you wouldn't die. Would you? <laughs> People get up in the morning. They don't eat breakfast. They go for the entire day. And then the meal they have is in the night. They don't die. <laughs> They don't die. At least the night you eat, <laughs> subhanAllah. Allah will never, ever place upon us such an act of worship that can cause harm to our health or our body or our life. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah will only place a duty, an action, and command upon us, asking us to do it, that we are able to do. Whatever we can do, Allah created us. So Allah knows us. It's not that somebody else created us and Allah has given us a law. Allah is the one who created our body. He knows what this body can stand. He knows what this body cannot stand. Subhanallah. And he has mentioned that to us. So the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah has made the fasting fard. And that is a duty. As we were speaking about the, the ahkam, the fiqhi ahkam. The jurisprudential laws of fasting last week. But this hadith is speaking about the fadail, the virtues, and the blessedness. So you have the fiqh and you have the fadail. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam further said, Wa qiyama laylihi tatawwa'an And Allah has made the stand in my night as an optional duty towards him. It, is, it was the sunnah and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when the month of Ramadan came in, he will stand that night and worship Allah besides the tahajjud salah. The riwayat recorded by Abu Zar Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala and coming from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. They all speak that in Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to engage himself in a lot of salat, rakats of salat. Besides the Far Salat, besides the Tahajjud Salat, besides the Ishraq Salat, besides the Duha Salat, besides the Awabin Salat, he will engage himself after Asia in those rakats of Salat, which is known as the Tarawi Salat. This is why, speaking about that, Imam Bukhari narrated the tradition in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qama Ramadana imana wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Whosoever, literally it means what? Establishes. From qiyam, just establish. But it means whosoever establishes the month of Ramadan by standing in ibadah and worship to Allah, then Allah will forgive all his past sins. All his past sins shall be forgiven. So two things are special duties in the month of Ramadan. And we must always understand that. Siyam during the day and Qiyam at night. Siyam and Qiyam both go hand in hand. So while observing the fast, we must not turn a blind eye to what the nights of Ramadan these nights have in them treasures of and treasures and treasures. 
Subhanallah. The holiest time is during the night. Subhanallah. Shaitan deceives us. And he makes us neglectful. You fast the entire day and you become tired. He says you did a lot already. <laughs> you can work with that. You fasted, you became tired, you know. You don't have to do this. And day, night after night, we are missing, subhanallah, valuable thing like pearls in Ramadan. Standing at night in Tarawih Salat behind the Imam. We don't do that. So we must not let shaitan deceive us and make us feel that, okay, you have done a lot. You can leave out this and you leave out that. This is a special. These are the khususiyat and specialities of Ramadan. The fasting at day and the qiyam at night. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he mentions about trying to gain closeness to Allah. Man taqarraba fihi bi khaslatin. Whosoever becomes closer. Yani he does action in order to gain closeness to Allah. Bi khaslatin with any action. With any optional action. He does it. And the prime objective, somebody is given an iftari, somebody is given sadaqat and charity, somebody is helping the poor and the needy, somebody cooks food and he drops it for the Muslim poor children, the orphans. He cooks food and he drops it by poor and needy Muslims in the locality. He recites Quran. He makes the zikr of Allah. He makes dua. Why? A Muslim will do all of these things in Ramadan. He wants to get closer and closer to Allah because he has learned these things from his beloved Habib Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa This was the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ramadan. In Ramadan, he disconnected himself from every other thing he used to do on a daily basis. And totally night and day in the worship of Allah in all different forms. And that is what he taught us. You can do a lot of things in Ramadan. But Allah made Ramadan for ibadah, for worship. That is what Ramadan is about. There is no better time for the worship of Allah than in Ramadan. And he has shown us that. He was the greatest muballig. From door to door he will go and invite people towards Islam. From street to street he will go and give the da'wah. He will go in campaigns, in expeditions, in battles. He will be the Amir. He will be the commander. He will do charitable work. He will do that every day. But when Ramadan came, he resigned himself for only wanting the ibadat of Allah. He was not on the street anymore. He was not from one door to the other to give da'wah anymore. He was not here and there anymore. In the ibadah of Allah, the worship of Allah, subhanallah. And this is why. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says when Ramadan came in and more so when the last 10 days came in and even before that he will tie his waist cloth tight and he will start his ibadah subhanallah he used to wear what we call the lungi the waist cloth the izar and you know if you want your back to gain strength to stand up long you tie you know that's why people they, they put a belt and they pull it tight so you get the back straight and you keep the back upright. That's what he used to do. And that was his action. So from these few uh, words of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are a lot of virtues he has mentioned. We learn a lot from these few things. That Ramadan must never ever, as the muhaddisin have stated, that your Ramadan must not be like other months. Ramadan has to be special, Allahu Akbar, for the believers, because Allah has made it special. Your actions in Ramadan must be totally different from other months. Ramadan demands that from us. Allah has made Ramadan like that for us. This is why Allah, from the first night of Ramadan, the hadith recorded by Imam Tirmizi and Ibn Majah from Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala. Allah puts an angel to make an announcement to all of us. What is the announcement of that angel? Ya baghi al khair ya qabil. Oh, the seeker of good. The time for doing good is here. Come forward. Come forward and do. Increase your good night and day. Aqbil, come. Come. Ya baghi al khair. Oh, seeker of good. Come forward. Now is the time. This is the season. The ideal season for what you want to do of good. And O seeker of evil. Decrease your evil. Stop doing wrong. Stop doing haram. 
Stay away. This month is not for that. This month is not for that. The month of Ramadan is a blessed season. Wrongs must not be done in a blessed season, subhanAllah. But good must be done. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us, give us uh, the life to see the month of Ramadan, which is a very, very a short time from now until Ramadan. But you know, that comes in one second. <laughs> one second and your soul is taken out from the body. Subhanallah. We beg Allah to give us life and spare our lives. We beg Allah to give, give us strength, good health, and the, what, the, the raghabah, the zeal in our hearts to rush towards uh, doing good. You can have health and strength, but you don't have any zeal to do it. You just lay back. You have to have that raghabah. That raghabah is the zeal. It's in that willpower. That thing within you that pushes you to do more and more. We have to beg Allah for that. If it's not there, then the month will pass by. And we beg Allah to make it easy for us and our family members and the entire Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wal akhirah da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.